Hi, I'm Lauren Bennett and I'm a product engineer on the Spatial Analysis Development Team at Esri. On the Spatial Analysis Team, we're really proud to get to support you and the work that you do to help your communities, your organizations, and the world make more informed, data-driven decisions using spatial analysis. One of the things that we've been working really hard on is helping to make your job easier, making our tools more streamlined, and taking common workflows and making them simpler. A great example of that is the new optimized hotspot analysis tool, which you saw just a few minutes ago. Traditional hotspot analysis requires the analyst to do some data prep and make several decisions prior to running a hotspot analysis. For incident data, the analyst must first aggregate points so that each polygon has a count of the number of incidents using the spatial join tool. Then, since hotspot analysis will look at each feature in relation to its neighboring features, the analyst must find an appropriate scale to use to define what it means to be neighbors, which is done using the incremental spatial autocorrelation tool. And if there are spatial outliers, those have to be dealt with as well. And finally, the user can run the hotspot analysis tool using those decisions that they made with the prior analysis. In 10.2, the new optimized hotspot analysis tool will take those incidents and go through all of the steps necessary to perform a hotspot analysis, making it much easier for new analysts to get started and opening up this kind of advanced analysis to everyone. So why are we so excited about optimized hotspot analysis? Why is it so important for us to find these kinds of patterns in our data? Why should we go beyond points on a map or thematic maps? Let's use the example from our optimized hotspot analysis demo, crime in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's about 40,000 points on a map. Often, when we look at points on a map, it's pretty hard to tell if we have a pattern just using a visual analysis. One common next step is to aggregate our points into polygons to see if that could help us make sense of the data. And it can definitely help us simplify the visualization from all of those points. But unfortunately, this kind of map can be pretty subjective. What if, for instance, we change the criteria for what's darkest on the map and what's lightest? What if we change from natural breaks, let's say, to a quantile classification method? It's the exact same data, but the maps tell us two very different stories. And the same would be true if we created a density map. We can change the classification method and change the story dramatically. Again, we can change the method from natural breaks to quantile classification method. And we can see just how different that story is. Now, both of these are great ways to visualize the point data, but if we want to be confident that the patterns that we're seeing are significant, we want to go further. And that's where hotspot analysis comes in. What's red on the map represents statistically significant clusters of high values. And what's blue on the map represents statistically significant clusters of low values. These are places where we're confident that the patterns that we're seeing are not the result of random processes. And knowing where we have significant clusters is an important clue that there are underlying spatial processes that we need to understand, not just patterns caused by our cartographic decisions. We know that you're doing important work using ArcGIS and spatial analysis to make really important decisions. We are so excited about optimized hotspot analysis because we want to help make your job as easy as possible and help you feel confident in the decisions that you're making.